Well, the Greeks held that the visual arts were the imitation of life, but the computer arts are the imitation of creation itself. Thank you very much. Because of the unique perspective he offered during the development of the internet, Dr. Joseph Carl Robinette Licklider impacted exploration, encounter, and exchange through his extraordinarily progressive ideas. Although the concepts Dr. Licklider presented were far ahead of their time, their potential was not lost, and almost all of his ideas have come into being on a scale unforeseen by anyone at the time of their inception. Following World War II, the United States and the Soviet Union were locked in an arms race of epic proportion. It was this fierce competition that made the creation of the internet possible. Just one year after the Soviet's successful launch of the Sputnik satellite in 1957, the United States, under the authority of President Eisenhower, initiated the Advanced Research Projects Agency. Akin to and largely responsible for the sweeping changes in our industrial military posture has been the technological revolution during recent decades. In this revolution, research has become central. A steadily increasing share is conducted for, by, or at the direction of the federal government. In 1962, Dr. Licklider, known to all as Lick, moved from Massachusetts to the nation's capital. Here, Lick would become the first director of the Information Processing Techniques Office, or IPTO, at ARPA. An acoustician by practice, Lick was new to this digital environment, but was intrigued by its possibilities. While most people viewed the computer as a tool used to expedite workflow, Lick saw something far more substantial. He saw the potential for a device that could connect the world. What was more interesting though in those early days is that he had a vision of a network, uh, what it could do. And in those early days, nobody was thinking of what a network could do or certainly not of implementing one. The vision was really Lick's. In the, in, the, in the originally, I mean, any none of us can really claim to have seen that before him, nor anybody in the world. I mean, Lick saw this vision in, in the early 60s. This concept soon came to be known as the Intergalactic Computer Network. First appearing in a series of memos in the early 60s, this idea provided the conceptual framework for computer networking and eventually the internet. Although initially an impractical project, when combined with the mathematical theories pioneered by Dr. Leonard Kleinrock and the driving leadership of Dr. Lawrence Roberts, Lick's distant dream soon became a reality. He was unaware of my work when he was thinking about his, and similarly I was unaware of his work when I was doing my work, and then when the two became aware of each other, it was clear that there was the capability that I had developed and the need and desire to implement it. There was no way that this was going to happen if somebody wouldn't champion it and know that it would work and make it happen, raise the money and push it through, it would never have happened. In 1964, Lick had a meeting with Dr. Lawrence Roberts which would inspire Roberts to create the network that Lick had envisioned. Then I went to a conference in Virginia in 64, where he and I sat down and talked for a long time about the future and what was needed next. And his concept of the intergalactic network was, uh, inspired me to think about making that happen because I had had similar problems with communicating between computers and I needed to see that next and I, and I thought it was important that we be able to get data from all over the world. So it was, it was he who convinced me to pursue the network and that was uh, in 1964. 
In 1966, Dr. Roberts was hired as the chief scientist of the IPTO, and a year later he began to build the network. Throughout the 60s, an era defined by progressive ideas, Dr. Licklider introduced a few of his own. Lick began in 1965 by introducing a topic that changed the way we explore information, the digital library. One of the things he thought about computers being able to do was, you know, provide access in a networked way to digital repositories of knowledge. Right now, it's possible to buy, for about a million dollars, an information store that will hold the equivalent of about a hundred thousand books. So one can store, one can buy the store for a book for about the same amount as he can buy the book. So that if everyone had a display console in his home and in his office, he could be reading from electronically stored information instead of from a book. And the difference is he could have access to anything he wanted to read instead of just what was in, within reach. Well, it turns out to be surprisingly inexpensive if you get wideband transmission facilities to send the stuff right when it has to be read instead of sending it to a local bookstore or a local library in the hope that it might be read. Libraries weren't the only thing that Lick dreamed of digitizing. He also envisioned a world where face-to-face -face encounters were not required for collaborative projects. A world where coworkers on opposite sides of the world could utilize computer networks to complete a single project together. The thing that makes the computer communication network special is that it puts the workers, the, the team members who are geographically distributed, in touch not only with one another, but with the information base with which they work all the time. So that when they get to developing plans, the blueprints, as it were, don't have to be copied and sent all around the country. The blueprints come out of the database and appear on everybody's scopes. And the correlation, the coordination of the activity is essentially right there in the computer network itself. And this is obviously going to make a tremendous difference in how we plan, organize, and execute almost everything of any intellectual consequence. Seeing that a computer network could allow for the quick and reliable transfer of information, Dr. Licklider hypothesized the creation of a system that would make the exchange of money virtual. If we get into a, a mode in which everything is handled electronically and your only identification is some little plastic thing you stick into the machinery, then I can imagine that they want to get that settled up with your bank account just right now and put it through all the checks, and that would require a network. In 1969, the first computer network was successfully created by the team at ARPA. This network was called the ARPANET, and would later become the predecessor to the internet as we know it today. By the end of its first year, the ARPANET project was responsible for connecting computers at UCLA to the University of Utah, UC Santa Barbara, and Stanford Research Institute. Through his work, Dr. Licklider was responsible for inspiring the creation of the first computer network as well as changing the way information is explored with the digital library, the way coworkers encounter one another with network collaboration, and the way money is exchanged with online banking. Although Lick passed away before many of his ideas were instituted, he was fortunate enough to witness the beginning of the dot-com boom, and will go down in history as one of the earliest and most crucial pioneers of computer networking. It's unquestionable that 